All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for December 18th, 2023 at 6 p.m. here at the Paul Shelter House. Good evening, audience members, administrators, and council. Uh, Ms. Burner, can you call a roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. Here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. All right, tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Thank you, dear Lord, for the day and all thy many blessings, many favors. Thank you for this meeting. Please guide us, Lord, all that your, thy work would be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, we need action on the uh, special meeting minutes for November 15th, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion or comments, questions on those minutes? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted seven zero. All right, then moving on, we'll need to accept the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting December 4th, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on those minutes? All right, when you're ready, please. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Stain was not present. Mayor Lowry? Uh, yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6-0-1. Uh, Mr. Page, there's a chair here, or the deputy will grab you one. Thank you, Ms. Burner. Uh, it's, all right, two communications. I'll hand it over to Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. So what we have in front of uh, council tonight is a Smith Park lot split. This is a recommendation of approval from the planning board. Uh, so short, sweet, simple, to the point lot split. It's basically for our new shelter house that's over here. So we use an address at 801 West Jefferson for this particular parcel. Uh, that current shelter house is currently listed on the same parcel, so you can't have two addresses on the same parcel. So we are splitting a little bit of that parcel off so we can address it. And that is the ins and outs of that request. Should council approve it, we need a simple motion. Should you not approve it, we would need a vote of at least five negative Notes. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay to approve. Second by Ms. Eggleston. Yeah. And any discussion? Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Pass the 7 0. All right, thank you very much. All right, and moving on to city managers report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of public, members of the audience. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. All this information is detailing the activity of the administrations in the month of November. We'll start with the planning and zoning mayor's court report. It is attached. Um, so this time of year, uh, code enforcement kind of slows down. We get caught up on policy revisions and other stuff due to the weather. So I'll read the stats. We had 14 total violations, five total properties violated. Uh, 3.57 average violations per property, uh, one closed violation, zero abatements, uh, no property submitted to mayor's court, and one extension granted. Any questions on the planning and zoning report? Council questions? No, sir. And for the police report, I'll go ahead and read these stats for the record, and then we'll let the rest of the administration give their department reports. So we have calls taken 369, 42 reports, 66 assists, 13 criminal arrests, two felony arrests, eight misdemeanor arrests, three warrants, 56 traffic stops, 39 traffic warnings, 17 moving violations, 2,044 business checks, 13 code enforcement follow-ups, six traffic crashes, and 12 parking citations. I would happy to entertain any questions with the police activity report. 
any discussion with council or questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. And moving on to city manager report, our fire and EMS report with fire chief, chief trustee. Council, citizens, for the month of November, the new Carlisle Fire Division responded to 94 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to fire, nine fire-related calls, 18 good intent or service calls, and four hazardous condition calls. We had four EMS calls answered by either Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 5 2 being on response. We answered three mutual aid calls, Medic calls for Pike Township, and five mutual aid Medic calls for Bethel Clark. Total run count as the date of this report was 1,433. We're now 1,448. Uh, we still have three smoke alarms. For the citizens, all they need to do is call the station or stop by, and we will be glad to either give you one, uh, give you detectors, or we'll come out to your house and, and install them. Other than that, that's it. All right, thank you, Chief. Council, any questions for Chief Trump? All right, thank you, Chief. We appreciate it as always, sir. Thank you, uh, Fire Chief. And moving on to City Manager Report, our Finance Report, with our Finance Director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public. The uh, Finance report is for the month of November. Our revenue is that we took in is $645,940.24. Our expenditures for November was $861,420.93. So we have for our total revenue received to date of $9,219,757.12. And our expenditures are only $8,425,172.73. Our beginning statement of cash January 1st was $7,510,472, and our ending so far is $7,654,454. All the banks are reconciled. For the mayor's court, or let me finish. The uh, income tax collection for the month of November was $154,443.86. And comparison to last year, year to date, we're still running about a little more than 4% more collected this year than last year. And then the mayor's court for November, they took in with fines and court costs $6,198 for a year-to-date total of $50,013.50. And that is the overview. The rest of the reports are online, and I'll entertain any questions. All right, thank you. So any questions for Ms. Harris this evening, Council? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. accept the uh, Second. Motion by Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Cook to accept the finance report. <coughs> no other discussion on that? Yeah. Ready, please. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Pass the 7 0. Move to accept Mayor's Court. So second. move, second. I've uh, got a motion from Mr. Lindsay to accept Mayor's Court report and second by Mr. Roadwell. Any discussion on that? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Pass the 7 0. Right, thank you very much, Ms. Harris. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving on to city manager report, our service report with our assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Good evening. Uh, we'll start under Public Works Department. Uh, leaf pickup is complete uh, with our schedule. However, um, as it was on the report, we ended up having a couple people ill, so we're going to go this week to do some stragglers that puts them out after the schedule was done. So we will definitely be getting those after that. Uh, after this week, then um, we'll be sending probably code around to you know and myself to um, tell them that they got to get those put in their trash if they um, put them out after this week. Uh, on behalf of the library, the city um, uh, basically co-worked uh, in a story walk project, which starts from Lake Avenue on the bike trail uh, down to the first turn. That's 25 story walk boards. Uh, we did uh, complete that installation, 
and I got a hold of the director of library last week and told them they can get ready to start putting their stories on. So you'll have them coming from both directions uh, on the path. So they'll be on opposite sides. Uh, moving on to the water department, um, the big one is uh, we're working on our OPWC old high service pump building project. Uh, we're looking to award a consultant. Um, soon you will see some uh, legis legislation come to you for a design build or a consultant uh, to get this uh, project in design. Under the lead service and water main replacement project, which is our old section of town, uh, you'll see legislation coming, possibly an emergency to approve by council for an engineering agreement. Uh, this project needs to be completed by 12 of 25. Uh, we were part of the last selection because um, it started two years ago, so they didn't give us much time. Um, so we will have them, supposed to have that from the engineer early January, probably for a second meeting uh, legislation piece. And then under sewer department, the plan expansion study, we did have probably our final meeting um, a couple weeks ago. We're expecting our report in January. Um, there's going to be, we did a couple additions and or subtractions to the document when I bring it to council. It had to do with the developments and how much may or may not come in and uh, add, add an extra bar graph in there to say, hey, if there's more than what we currently know that's going on with our two developments, um, it'll kind of um, detail that out a little bit. So uh, again, once I have that done, uh, I'll be getting with Mr. Bridge and then uh, we'll get that uh, supplied out to everyone. Uh, 2023 road reconstruction, actually, um, they'll be coming to an end, but we, we are working on the 24 road reconstruction items, trying to figure out um, with the additional money placed in the budget, uh, what more work we can do with a few of the roads that uh, we've talked about in the past. But uh, once I get with the engineer, we'll uh, kind of get those roads um, out to council and the citizens as fast as possible on where we're headed. Uh, Fenwick Drive is totally complete. And then um, I don't have any other further updates on any of the other items since the last one. I can enter, en entertain any questions on the report or anything else. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko this evening? I just had one, Mr. Kitko. I had someone ask me about, uh, I believe, like sewer caps that are still over on uh, <clears throat> the, road, uh, the road we just repaved. Fenwick. Fenwick, thank you. Uh, because uh, they're still adjusting the manholes, I'm assuming? They're adjusting the manholes on Fenwick, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Mr. Westman? This may be a springtime project. We plan on uh, replacing the red and blue stripes on Main Street. Now that it's repaved, yes. Mm -hmm. Springtime? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with the city manager report under discussion topics. I got a, quite a few bullet points, but I'll get through them quickly. Uh, update on the Rumkey Waste Management Switch. As council knows, I did email out the certified letters to those addresses that I did email to you. We got most of those back. I have fielded a few phone calls regarding those letters. Uh, some people understand, some people are understandably upset. So council, I did send out an email today with all your contact information on it, so you may be getting an email from a concerned citizen. Um, so just just mind you of that um, waste management I think for the most part has got most of the containers out I'm sure there's gonna be some stragglers I know they still have the dumpster left at the city building so we're working with them to get those out uh, so Haddock's field as well sir so as we progress into this transition hopefully we see more of these uh, moved um, but so far the transition on Rumpke's in has just been fantastic so Rumpke's been very very good to work with during this transition uh, Rite Aid got great news we actually through the uh, great work of our vice mayor. Have, I have contacted the actual building owner of Rite Aid. I actually met, him, uh, met with him at 101. So he is actually putting together a package for me to submit to council. So I'm assuming that's going to be clearly after the first of the year. I still don't know exactly when that is going to be. But that is going to include a sell price and also, for his request, a lease price. Uh, but a few months ago, council did task me with that task to look into that building. And uh, I am uh, moving, made some great strides with that. Thanks for the help of the vice mayor. So thank you, Mr. Grimm, for that. We appreciate it. Um, planning board update. They had a, their last meeting was on December 12th. You guys uh, voted on that lot split tonight. That was one of the one of three things they did vote on at the planning board meeting. The other two is they will be having a public hearing. I do believe it's at a, a date in February to actually have a public hearing to vote on adding solar panels and actually amending chapter 1240 to allow the zoning inspector to put cases in the mayor's court. Right now it just says our code enforcement officer, so we're just kind of cleaning it up to allow the zoning inspector as well. Um, update on the 101 South Main Street offices. Mr. Mayor, come visit us today. We have, me and Howie, have officially moved in. 
So the second floor is about done. Our two front offices have been completed. Um, so we're waiting on Mr. Uh, Moore's office to be done, and that is our planning director, and we'll get him over there. So if any councilman would like to stop in and see us, just give us a call, we'll buzz you on up. But it is a very nice, uh, nice offices for both me and Howie, and for uh, Mr. Moore, and the additional staff we'll be bringing on. So please just come visit us, take a look at it. Clark County Public Health Update, uh, they, it is attached, as well as the New Carlisle Health Stats. And of course, I always put on your upcoming legislation, so council knows. We'll have an ordinance to accept a codification update. Uh, Gov deals for un unwanted city property. That was just sent to the attorney today from our assistant city manager. So thank you, Mr. Kitko, on that. And a union pay increase, that will be in January. Um, I don't have any additional topics. I do want to make a one mention, though, if that's okay with you, Mr. Mayor. Please. I just want to thank you for your time as mayor. You've been great to work under. Um, we kind of started around the same time. so. Yeah. I'm glad that you are moving on to go to bigger and better things and spend time with your family and chill out a little bit. Yes. But what you have done for this city has been amazing and you have contributed across many spectrums. So the administration thanks you. You've stopped in and brought the, the ladies and us many treats over the years. Yes. But as far as being a mayor and caring about the employees here, he has set the bar very high for the next mayor to uphold. So we do appreciate Mr. Lowry and what he's done for the staff and for the city. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I always, I never know whether I should continue bringing the cookies because I sometimes get mad. You know, <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I understand the struggle too myself, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> it's very kind to you. Thank you. That's all I have for the city manager report. All right, sir. moving on. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, committee reports. None tonight. Move on to comments from members of the public. So if anyone has any questions or comments, please go to the podium and your name and address for the record. And then try to keep it to five minutes. We do keep time when this hits red. Um, that's when you're out of your time. So. Correct. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank you all for Name. service. So, oh, I'm Name. sorry. Law McLaughlin, 327 South Main Street. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you for what you've done. Um, this city is going forward more than it ever has, and that's a great thing. So please keep it up. I know some of you are going to be on council again. Some of you are not. Um, treat the new people with respect and try and work together. Uh, these housing developments, restaurants coming in. Uh, this city is going forward. It's wonderful to see. You're in a great situation as far as money for change. Instead of $8,000, you have quite a bit more than that now. So <laughs> God bless you all. Keep up the good work. Thank you for all of, all of you that all of you do. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And Lowell, thank you for coming. But I also do want to say something also to you. Um, I want to thank you as commissioner for coming to some of our meetings that we feel are you know, important because, uh, you know, it's just nice to know that one of the commissioners cares about the other side of the county. Yes, I definitely do. So thank you. And we have another one from the west side of the county. So that's good. Mm. I'd like to meet her someday. <laughs> Rick Lowry, 604 Colony Trail. Sorry about the hair. Had to take the hat off. Um, I'll keep it short. Moved here in 1967. Fell in love with New Carlisle. Been here ever since. If I get emotional, I'm sorry. I still love New Carlisle. And thank every one of you. It is the finest little city I've ever been in. You've done a great job. There's been problems along the way, but nothing like it used to be. I remember on a regular basis. A gentleman walk in and a little knows what I'm talking about. Well, this week I'm going to sue you for this and this and this. And he'd come in the next week and I'm going to sue you for this and that. And he was a bag of wind. I'm sorry. I knew him and knew him well. He had some good qualities about him, but that's what it was. And we don't have that anymore. I don't come to council meetings that much. I watch quite a few of them. I try to stay out of it because of Michael. But uh, something I would like to bring up that is very dear to my heart. Swimming pool. Now talk to both sides at once. Please leave that swimming pool here. Make it better so that the children in this town have something to do. 
we give raises, we buy trucks, we do everything, you know all about it. Idle hands and idle minds tend to get into trouble. I know it for a fact, I was little once. Hell, I did it when I was big. So, I mean, you know, let's, whatever it takes, get, keep this swimming pool, guys, we've got to. I know it's a burden, but there's a whole lot of burden, a whole lot of burdens that in life we have to jump on, get done, and make it work. Please make this swimming pool work. Do everything you can. I don't care what it takes. Make it work, make it stick. Thank you. Go sometime a half an hour in the middle of the summer when it's 90 degrees, you're 85, and just go sit at the pool and watch. I think if you do that and really watch and listen, you'll understand everything I just just tried to say. I probably didn't put it right, but I think you'll get it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Furnace Drive. Um, I have a question and a, and a comment uh, about the trash. I think on the car that they sent us, it said to set your cans out within three feet from the curb to be picked up. And I know there's been different things throughout the years, whether we should put them in the street or whether they should be up in the grassy area. I'm still seeing several in the street and it makes it so hard for when the trash trucks are coming and cars are parked on the street with our streets being so narrow to get through. And I just think it would be good uh, for council or somebody to let us know what we are supposed to do. I, I know the new trash management said put it on the grass, yeah. but I think there's just confusion about where the best place to put it is. What I would say is, is I mean, I've always put mine up on the right on the like a foot behind the curb in the yeah, grass or right. you know wherever it may be. I think in the street is probably one that. And correct me, anybody, if I'm wrong. I would imagine it probably might depend also where you live. Like mm -hmm. if you maybe have something, you know, around your house where a truck can't get that close, then maybe in the street is the better position for okay. that particular location. I mean, I would imagine if they're in, you know, up off the curb a foot or so, not real far back by the sidewalk. I mean, I, you know, I think that tends to be the way it usually goes. I mean, so unless somebody else has any opinion on that, I just don't. I don't know why it would need to be in the street unless, I, like I said, there's a, a situation where you've got something blocking it to where they can't get close enough. Yeah, yeah. I just noticed that on Prentice and a lot of others that I've seen too that there, there's still a lot of them on the street that sometimes makes it difficult. You have to stop and wait for another car. Right to get through because you, you, there's just not room. So just wanted some clarification on what's, what the best place is for that. Are people putting them in the part of the road where people drive on? Yeah. 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 Well, that's just lack of common sense. I mean, that's, just, that's, that's, that's We agreed that's, on something, Randy. Yeah, I can't, I can't help those people, but no, we'll, we'll drive around next collection day and I'll take a look and see what's going on. And I think just on the Rumkey thing, it's more of a general statement. I mean, just put it to where they can get it, and it's not causing a, a safety issue. Yeah. But they are in a road where people can't drive. In the road. That's right. that's not what they. Yeah. Put that. Yeah. That's the in literal road. interpretation of the of the brochure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll next Monday. I'll drive around for okay. Monday. Okay. Thank um, you for that. And another thing, I just like to thank everyone on council. That is just such a hard job, and everyone's done such a great job, and and thank Mike for being mayor. Uh, I know he's anxious to retire and, and go enjoy life, but yes. but we'll miss him and and uh, we'll get another good mayor next year. So just thank you guys. Are we seeing the trash cans in the road of Pacific part of town, or is it just citywide? Or is I've it one little it section? I, well, I notice it because I'm driving Where down you're at. And, I've actually driven, you know, and in that area, everywhere. but I think there's several places. I'm not sure I see quite. I wonder if it's places. is it after pickup or before yeah, pickup? No, before. before. Before and after. <laughs> and sometimes they leave them there. Next Tuesday, you drive around. I will. Putting their trash out. They don't want anything to pop. And when they're leaving for long, they're going to get out of the road. So they get in and out of the road. I put mine on my road, but it's like, oh, against, it's against the curves. So if you're driving down it, you're not going to hit the thing. Yeah, okay. I'll look into it. I love it. <laughs> 
Sure. You go down Madison and we'll take a look. Both sides throughout. The Nothing should have changed from where you put your waste management cans to this can. It should be yeah. in the same spot. Well, it's always been that way. When it was waste management, they were out. So never had a complaint of that. First, I heard you. So we'll definitely take a look. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Zimmerman. Did we, Rand, Mr. Bridge, did we hire a new fellow back here? Yeah, we sure did. Would you like to introduce yourself, sir, to our, as, our, as our city staff? No, just closest place you said I consider. I asked. Oh, we're teasing you. We're teasing. He, he volunteers about enough time for this time, so we'll call him city staff. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. All right. You, uh, anyone else? Name and address? Yep. We'll go to you, then we'll go to you, Mr. Gorby. Hi, my name is Melinda Minky and I live at 707 West Jefferson, which is literally right next door. Um, and I just want to first say we just moved here and um, we love the community. And I thank you all for that because it is a lot different than it was when I first moved here. Um, I lived in Bethel growing up, so it's not very far, but it was a lot different back when I grew up in Bethel. Um, and you've done a lot to improve the community, uh, which is why we decided to invest in the community and move here. Um, so I wanted to put that positive out before I'm the negative person because I feel like I don't want to leave off negative. Um, I do have some concerns about the water company and department and I do believe that there are concerns that are equally um, found very vocally on social media platforms and very vocally talked about amongst a lot of people so I just wanted to bring some of those to your attention because I think it's something that does need to be addressed. Um, I don't want to carry on about details of what I went through, uh, though I do want to, sorry, I'm a little nervous, uh, say that when you offer online billing, it should be ready and available. And there's a big problem with invoices not being properly available. Uh, certain invoices showing zero balances while others show balances due in different due dates making it a very confusing platform and all it does is open up a big area of air for the consumer um, also it, it's really confusing on knowing which due dates do and what you're supposed to pay and when or if you're supposed to pay both um, if you're behind which unfortunately we became behind out of our own air which we acknowledge uh, so my point is, is if you have online billing, it should be available to view or we should only offer invoices mailed to people. That way, you know, they're getting their information and have something to resource to. Uh, every time you try to pull up an old invoice, it does give an error message online. So uh, now also, I'm a little nervous, sorry. Um, Turning off services at the end of the day, I, I just think that it's kind of hard, and it, it happens, actually, I found out due to my error, um, at the end of the day often, and there's a lack of, of, you can't contact the office at the end of the day. You can't find out if you made a mistake. And then, uh, you know, even trying to contact the office is very impossible. Um, the next day, they were in meetings for four hours. I couldn't get a hold of anyone. I think there's a big, huge lack of communication and a service that needs to be available to the public um, a lot. You know, I actually had to get a hold of the mayor to get a response. Um, and Randy, you called me, and I am very grateful for that because it involved the water department, and uh, that's the first time I got a response. Sure. So uh, it took that, though, to get to that response. And I don't think you guys have enough time for every citizen to reach out to you for responses on just questions that are typical. Um, so I do think that the communication needs to be a little bit more open and the services need to be more available for when we have concerns as consumers. Um, sorry. Uh, I also think that everyone should have accurate information. If you have a service and you you're providing it, you know, everyone that's going to, that's answering the phone should have the same information as the next person that's going to answer the phone. Um, I do not understand why the information is, is just so very misinformed and then the online services is very misinformed, but there's a huge gap in the communication available. Um, and for an example, when I spoke with Randy and the person there, 
It was very simply put that I owed $300, found out the next day, two days later, that I only had to pay 200 and I had to find out from him about payment arrangements. Why are these not brought up from the company that I'm paying with my tax money to provide a service? Um, and one more thing, because I don't want to keep you guys. Um, I do find it's very alarming that as a resolution, when someone gets behind in our community, that the only option available that we are offering um, is Sacred Heart as a resolution. And it's not insulting to me because I feel like I'm above the need of what common people, I, I just don't, I don't, we shouldn't be offering resources that are available to our community for um, underprivileged families as a resource to someone who just needed a couple days to pay a bill. We should have resolutions. We should be able to offer them. And the fact that the water company doesn't have options set up to try to resolve these things, I think is insulting, very lacking, and very far behind, as well as the payments only going by $100 when everyone I've spoke to is bills are usually above $100. Why am I being fined and charged more to pay my bill online because I work in the community too? So these are things that really do need to be addressed because the system is not working. But thank you for, my, for your help. I really appreciate it. I have never been responded to so quickly. I do think the town is going to miss you. I only lived here for two months, and I've seen a huge, you really impressed me as a mayor. And I do think that they're going to miss out with, with you leaving. So I just could tell you cared, and I could also tell you cared when you helped too. Um, but I was really impressed with how quickly you got a hold of me. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, you know, real quick, just, you know, because we've discussed water a lot this year. Um, I don't know a lot about the, the back end of the system and how it works. We don't use it. You know, my wife brings in a check and pays it every, you know, every month that way. Um, I don't like the setup of where, you, you know, there's a cutoff of you've got to pay it $100 increments and things of that nature. I think that's a, that's a really poor system of doing it that way. Um, unfortunately, I won't be here to, to work with that, but, you know, obviously there's going to be many of you that will be. Uh, I don't know if Mr. If um, Mr. Bridge has anything he wants to touch on or counsel. Uh, I mean, I, I always think that there's definitely a better way to. There's always there's always room for improvement on anything, whether it's us, a, a software system for water, or whatever it may be. So, um, Mr. Roadwell. Um, my my memory may not be clear, and I'll find the packet. But we we discussed this hundred dollar rate. Yeah, thank you. Um, and and I do believe Mr. Bridge produced some very good data where it showed upwards of about 93% of our citizens' water bill falls well below the $100. That's why we didn't increase that threshold. Because <clears throat> um, it actually would cost those who water bill is over 100, such as myself, it actually cost me more money um, for processing fees, if my memory serves me correctly. You are absolutely correct. I was going to remind council that that was voted on and discussed with you guys. Yes. This past year, I do believe. Yeah. Like I said, I, I'll, I'll find the packet, but I know it was early on and it was either January or February where we looked at changing the billing process. Um, as for questions about the water department, I will direct you to Mr. Kitko. He is by far the most knowledgeable okay. and Mr. fabulous, and he will walk you through detail by detail how the water system works how the bills are, are broke down, how he can tell you if you flush your toilet at two o'clock in the morning, because he'll see it. Um, so, and as for Facebook, I, I know everyone wants to go on Facebook and, 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 and proclaim how bad the city is, um, but in the grand scheme of things, a couple of things, one, it's a small amount, two, majority of those people who complain about the city water don't even live in the city. They live in Park Lane and they get on, you know you're from New Carlisle when they're not from New Carlisle, no offense to Park Lane, but their water system is completely separate from ours. That and what happens is people see that and, and they say, oh, I have that same problem. No, no you know, you really don't. It's, it's it two separate systems. I'm not saying there wasn't an issue with yours. I actually was going to point out the fact that I actually thought more so than how it handles us as a community. Um, because people are up and they are seeing that. Resolved, and I think that the resolution is a better answer. And actually, you know, there's talking to these people are finding something that works better rather than 
them talking on Facebook or even at the end mentioned and then other people mentioning it, it just is a bad look and then people don't. It's one that, that people will steer from when they're looking at my home. Did you? Yeah, I, I talked to you. It was, uh, sorry for having to be under those circumstances, first off. Yes. Um, it was a horrible way to meet for the first time. Welcome to New Pearl Isle. Um, besides all the negative going on, it is a great community. Um, we did recently do a convert software confusion in a water department. And we'll pass it on to our finance director because she's in charge of that department that manages that. So we had to have some hiccup for about a month with some past bills and that history come up, which is probably why you saw that error. Um, so when we spoke on the phone, we had it up right there on the uh, invoice cloud. And do you, did you register for online account access? I actually, part of the error in my accountability is that I didn't realize we paid our separate than our Trash. Separate. Yeah. So I thought it was one bill. And sure. Messed up and we fell on, so no, we didn't until recently because we had to get caught up. And that's, and that's common in so many cities to have that combined. It truly is. I understand why that happened on your behalf. I truly do. During that software conversion, some things had, had to be re redone and kind of just revamped and kind of relooked at when that software was, was in place. And on top of that, we're also training a new person who's been employed with us now for how? Four about four months. So she's learning the ropes, which is why I had to be the one to explain to you about those payment arrangements. Okay. So um, I do have it on my list to start talking to council after the first of the year about revamping our water policies and to kind of take a look at it because I think we are missing some things. Um, we do have repeat offenders and I hope you understand that. We got people have just every month have the same issue, but then we have issues where they're isolated. You know, so what do we need to balance as administration is in the state of Ohio, that's called an enterprise fund. So it really is responsible for making its own money. And when we credit stuff like that, they kind of take a look at that the auditors do. So our job as administrators is to make sure that what we present to council, council proves is actually in line with state code, et cetera. No one gets in trouble for giving away water and credit and stuff like that. But I think there are ways to improve. The online system, like I said, to that software conversion, it, it is starting to kinks are starting to work out. Um, but I think if we continue on having more problems with this for the software down the road, it's something we're going to have to look at. And I know I mentioned to you, and I don't want anyone to ever take this the wrong way, but you know, when we, we do bill a lot of accounts and usually they're, they're smooth, but like I said, we always have these in incidents that we can look at and how, what are, what, what are we missing that we can prevent these in the future? Now, a lot of it just stands for, you know, people not paying the bill, forgetting or whatever the case may be. But I think when you're new to a city and you don't understand the processes, and I'm, I did the same way when I moved to my city. You know, it was separate before, and now it's combined, so I'm trying to make two bills and it's really just one. So, completely understand. Do you, Ms. Harris, have anything that you can add to the conversation? Yes, when we um, did revamp with the software, we also um, put in place um, more options for uh, payment plans and assistance that we never had before. We have uh, three really good people that work in the water department or have transitioned to another one and they live in town and they're very vested and so I, I'm disappointed to hear that you didn't get the attention that you needed because that's not like the staff. Um, we put out 2,300 bills every month and about two or three a year have some issues and we do want to address them so if you know if you want to still contact me in the office we can make sure we get you you know caught up. As for invoice cloud that's an option for paying online and the fee is their fee for uh, the credit card fee. It's not a fee that the city chooses. It's just another option to pay. But we have free options for um, ACH and, of course, check and cash in the office. So we have other ways of paying the bill and keeping those automatic. So, again, we can um, extend out some additional help um, to look at your account to, to help you. But I know my staff really, really tries hard, and they, they want to help. So um, please, please reach out. Yes, we did. We, and we did get it situated. Um, okay. It's just the, the information I think feel needs to be provided better. Sure. And that's what I say behind it. And when someone says they have a couple of days and they can't, they, they, we expect that our bill will be only 15 bucks. They said, you know, it, it's just, yeah, I'm going to offer services. Mm -hmm. That's all. I appreciate it. And I will be more Is it the shut off notice? <laughs> Bill. Is that shut off notice for the just show? Is that what confused Mr. Lindsay? Uh, Ma'am, has your problem been resolved to this point? I, I resolved it. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask you what day the water was turned off? Uh, well, the invoice dated the 15th, which was our KK, mm -hmm. and it got turned off on the 12th. I didn't realize that the invoice that wasn't going up, the, the 
balance with the one that was due. So it was turned off the day it was due, the 12th. We send out a bill and then a, then a you want to sell a process? So the, in Colleen may be able to follow up, but there's a bill that, uh, so your water's from the middle of the month to the middle of the month. So on the first, you're going to, on the first of the month, or at the end of that month, you're going to get a bill. That bill is due two weeks by the 15th. If that bill is not paid on the 15th, the following month, within the next, within the, those two weeks of the following month is when you get disconnected for the uh, month and a half back. But on that second notice that you get on the next bill, because you didn't pay the previous bill, that's when you'll get that uh, disconnect. So you're actually disconnected um, almost a month after your due date. It's not two days after. So if, if she got disconnected two days after that, it was for a previous bill, not for the current bill. And I know that's what Colleen had said. There's some um, confusion on what is a, your regular bill, which is usually blue. Mm -hmm. I believe still, and then your past due bill, which will bring that forward plus your current due, and it'll say to you know to stay connected, it's X amount of dollars. Okay. So, if I may, sir. Sir. So you send out the original bill because I've never had a second bill. You send out the original bill, and then you send out a past due bill. Is, yes. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. And did you get both of them, ma'am? No, it's not not when you're online. That's the problem. When you're online, they didn't mail it to you. You don't mail those out, sir. Those are physically it's mailed. It's a now. choice that they make online whether to get e-bills or paper bills. So you can flip that choice when you sign up with Invoice Cloud, and they'll yes, mail it to you. Yeah. Yes. It, it does not work. You cannot pull up past bill. And when we paid our water bill in full <coughs> last month, we assumed it was in full on the 17th. You know, it stated there was a new balance due, and we literally just did here. That's the error. Then the new bill we thought was on the 15th. There was another pass due that no one mentioned. Okay. And the online account didn't show. So when you, when you said you talked to the water people, was that the city you was talking to or the billing company? She was talking to us. It was talking to, all talking to you guys? Well, who, what did you say? She was talking to who or who? Well, I, I, she had mentioned she had talked to the people that sent the bill out. And we have a company that does the billing for us, correct? Oh, she didn't talk to them. She talked to the staff. Okay, well, that's what I wanted to clarify. She was talking to the staff. We talking to the staff. So okay. you signed up for online. And you're, you're, you can't get any of your old bills pulled up, not even till, till to this day. Either right now, with the payment arrangement we set, you cannot see the new date, bill date. You can or you can't? Like, we signed for it. We agreed to this date, and you guys made us move in and put our, our signature on it. But it's not online. So if it's that important, I'm just, why is it not available with online services that show my agreement that I agreed to? You okay. might have an issue with it. Here's, let's let's do this because this is gonna this will keep going forever. Yeah. I, 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 no, 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 no. I say because can I give you my number when you talk? The, right. We're meeting me again. Sorry. Okay. Great. Yeah. That way. You, I'll be there. Last month I signed on just to see what my goal was so I can write a check. And when I signed on, it automatically signed me up for the e-bills. So now I'm going to paper bill, and I don't. Use it. Automatically? Yep. Yes. Right. It automatically signed. Yep. Too. All right. And I don't yeah. do it. That's why we never do we owe water. We I get it. Water so that's part of the. Uh, okay. 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 No. I'll look into that. They should not auto. They should give you a choice. They should just shouldn't auto be. They should right. check a box yes or no. Mr. Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor. It's automatic, paperless. And this uh, email that uh, was make these sent. She said that she could not get on a payment plan unless she was current. You have to pay your bill before, but you can't make a payment arrangement after you're shut off. No, after you're shut off. Mm -hmm. So if you're behind. You, you, have, you have to do the payment arrangement before. Okay. And that's all something that, again, council had voted on through the legislation update we did. We did a massive overhaul of the water rates. Um, I think this year when we were talking about the $100 increment. Well, that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> if they don't have the money to pay the past due balance, well, I think, well, I think the thought behind it is you've got a month. You have two you've got weeks to speed. call us and contact us behind, once no. Call before you get to that point of being shut off and make an arrangement. Correct. Yes. Okay. Which yep. makes sense, but if you don't know that there's a bill. Right. Sure. I didn't know, yeah, the automatic thing is weird, yes. so I'm going to look into that. That's a big issue. That's why we were still upset. Yeah. 100 percent. I didn't know that. Just until now. So I thank you. Yeah. Yep. Would it be possible maybe stay open late one day a week or maybe Saturday hours just to keep the work during the week? Uh, probably not with our union. Not with the union. 
Yeah, we're out to get that approved through the union, and that's a lot of overtime hours. It's it's I understand the need to have it, but that's that's a but, lot of customer service. That's also why we have a drop box. But we yeah we can drop box. You can come. I think one of the things I'm going to start changing with the new council is, and I haven't talked to Miss Harris about it yet, so I do apologize. I don't like the fact that when they come in, you can pay your online bill to midnight, but then the drop box closes at 4 p.m. So to me, I think if you come in before we open the next day and you put your payment in, it's fine. You come in the next morning, it's there. No harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. Um, but as far as mandating Saturday hours, that would be difficult, in my opinion. Anything else? That's it. All right. Yeah, just one more thing. Just reach out to Mr. Bridge. Like you said, you know, we've had multiple people come to meetings. They are great at breaking down your bill, showing you all the great things that that system will show you. So thank you. Really. All right. Anyone else? Can, I, oh. can you spell your last name for me? It's M E N is in Nancy K E. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barner. Thank you again, Mr. Gorby. Your name and address, sir. Uh, Marshall Gorby, 408 Floor Avenue. Uh, mainly, I'm here to uh, show support for Mike Lowry as being the mayor. He's done a great job. <clears throat> He's been part of Heritage of Flight. I've worked with him, well, since he was a pup, basically. And, uh, you know, he's, he's done so much for the community. And you're right, he is going to be missed. Uh, not just for the fact that he does respond to citizens because... That's just the kind of guy he is. He's lived here his whole life, and he loves the community. And luckily, there's a lot of people that feel that way. Uh, but we were very lucky to have him. We were lucky to have his dad as a mayor, Lil McLaughlin as a mayor, Bill Cook as a mayor. I mean, I remember when Bill was mayor, too. And I think water bills were brought up even back then, weren't they, Bill? <laughs> but uh, I basically wanted to say thank you, Mike, for everything you've done. And not just that, but Randy, this year, you, and Howie, and Chief Trustee. I can't tell you how much the city has come together. I don't know if you noticed downtown. We uh, offered a contest this year for downtown best window display. Uh, basically started off by Aid's Hidden Treasures because, uh, you know, somebody really decorated the window. So we thought we'd get everybody involved. And if you drive through town now, you realize that a lot of people got involved in that. And it really makes the town look nice. So we're very happy to do that. We had three first place Three first place winners, three first place winners, uh, first, second, third. So, uh, but uh, I want to say thank you, Mike, for everything you've done. Council, thank you guys too. I mean, you guys show up for things, help us out a lot, and I appreciate that. But I think the community is coming together more and more. Chief Trustee's been more involved. Uh, he helps me in everything and anything I want done. Christmas parade. Heritage of Flight. We have it. Randy's been a big help. Something we catch a snack somewhere. We call him, and Randy has stepped up to help us out. And of course, it's always nice to have Mike on our on the flight committee because if something needs to be done, of course, he likes driving the city cruiser when he needs to with the lights on. But still, <laughs> oh, he doesn't do that. <laughs> but uh, that's what I want to say. I just want to say thank you, Mike Lowry, for everything you've done and your. You're greatly going to be, well, hopefully you'll still stay with us here at your flight. I'm gone. No, you can't do that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the city's a better place for you and your whole family. And uh, that means a lot to everybody, I know. I think, I can't think of anybody who would have anything negative to say about you. Uh, but uh, you do a great job for the city and we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, anyone else? Mr. Sage, nice to see you here, sir. I have to actually introduce you. I mean, I know you're going to give your name, but Mr. Sage is the uh, commander, correct, at the American Legion north of town. Does a great job with the flag burning ceremony and things of that nature. Go ahead. Well, that's why I have to stop today. I am the commander, but I got a lot of my members that live here. And uh, I just want to say you have a great town here. I've been all over the United States. And as I say a lot of times, this is the best small community in the United States. It's been a pleasure working with Mike. I've worked with Howard a little bit also. And Randy. It's just that nice for us to work with. That's why we like being involved with things. That's why we donate some of our money to all the local programs, too. This year, we're taking care of 13 families. 
Okay, so we like being part of this, and I'm just speaking for all the members there. And thank Mike for all you've done. It's been a pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys do an amazing job. All right, anyone else? Roy Kegley, 977 Free Road, um, owner of Abe Sin Treasures and also Troy and Goodall Lumber. Um, I have known Mr. Lowry, Mayor Lowry, now for 11 and a half years. Um, I appreciate him as the mayor. I um, appreciate all the good he has done, even though we've not agreed on a few things along the way, as with everything else. Um, but uh, he has been an outstanding friend and also an outstanding mayor. Um, and I would also thank, like to thank uh, Chief Trustee and the New Carlisle Fire Department, as well as uh, the Sheriff's Department for uh, this past Saturday night when we did the uh, lights through the town. Um, I think it was a good first year for it, and uh, we look to expand it again, and hopefully we can count on them again next year. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Yes, Dad. Yes, I can't tell Dad no. No, you can't. Go ahead. Right. Uh, it's great to stand up here and hear you talk about Michael. But I have to say this. I agree. Yes. Driving force with him. But you know. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Does a whole lot with Michael. Yeah, she does. Here to fight. Michael needs a big hand. All right, anyone else? All right, we're good. We're moving on. We're good. Okay, moving on to uh, let's see here. Resolutions done. Uh, ordinances too. Oh, hold on. Let me get there. Miss Burner. No, no, I'm not ready. Too bad. Too bad. Ordinance 2023-66. Um, this was introduced on December 4th, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Lindsay. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance. We do contract out with the Clark County Sheriff's. Um, and every year we have to renegotiate the contract with them. Um, they are unionized as well. So they work out their dues and then they come back to us. So this contract is for five or six deputies. And how I would like to handle that is get this passed accordingly. And then uh, maybe February, March, talk with the new council about that six deputy. Kind of want to save some of that money because January, February, crime activity is kind of lower. And then maybe explore that in, in, in the spring. All right, council, any questions? Yes. Mr. Do we have the option to reject any deputies? Oh, we can reduce by it, yeah. If we need to go down to four. Or are you talking about if you don't like a particular if deputy? We get someone who's definitely not qualified. Yeah, I have the authority to write a letter uh, stating the, the concerns and then requesting that deputy be re removed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right, when you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2023 67. This was also introduced on December 4th. An ordinance granting the city manager authority to purchase real property for the purpose of providing additional access to reserve at Honey Creek. So moved. Second. <laughs> uh, we'll go with Ms. Eagleston and second by Mr. Cook. <laughs> uh, explanation of this ordinance. So we have a residential development coming off of um, Main Street, uh, north of the Chrysler dealership. Um, when development of that plan, we had one of the second entrance, so we're actually going to come off of Baker Drive, and we have acquired some property by the Hensley family. Uh, the Hensley family has been great to the city over the years. The actual retail value of this, uh, retail value, the actual uh, 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 assessment of this property, the valuation of the property is actually $1,000. They're selling it to the city for a dollar and then gifting the rest is uh, in-kind contribution. All right, thank you, Council. Any discussion? Questions? Questions. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, will that check be written in, that dollar be written in a check? It will be a check, actually, yes. Just wondering. 
<laughs> I just have a question. So it says on here, authority to purchase real property. Have we ever purchased property that wasn't real? Yes. Oh, yeah. It did not go over well with the auditors. Okay. <laughs> Could you find they it? They wanted to find Yeah, I, I couldn't prove it. <laughs> he lost no, it. No, we've never. I was just curious. <laughs> lost it. All right. Uh, Ms. Burner, when you're ready. Yeah. Um, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Pass the 7 0. All right, thank you very much. Do you want me to read other business? Please. Other business. The employee Christmas party will be Thursday, December 21st. Um, the city office will be closing at 11 30 a.m. City offices are closed Friday, December 22nd, Monday, December 25th, Tuesday, December 26th for Christmas break, and open for discussion on city-related business. All right, Council, any other business? Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor. I've had a presence in the vehicle house since the start of the newspapers in 2008, and I have attended just about every city council meeting since then. When I first started, Lowell was the mayor, and then Dick Zandbach was elected. And then Mike. And I must say, Mike, you've done an incredible job. Yes, sir. I think you'll be hard pressed to find anyone who loves to collaborate. Thank you. Just thank you for your service. Appreciate it, sir. I do. Thank you. I'm not naming the street after you. No, <laughs> we're not. Okay. Maybe the alley. Right. All right, I'll take the alley. Ms. Eggleston. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to take a minute to thank Abe's for the uh, organizing the last Saturday night where we put lights on the ladder truck and Jim Bobo's truck and their trucks and tried to put stuff on my car. But it was fun to drive around town and the response of the citizens was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to help you do it again next year. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Chief. Mayor, from the Fire Division, we'd like to thank you for your support. Where you've been mayor and your wife's. It's been fantastic working with you. Thank you, Chief. I, uh, I take it, I walked up here and sat down. I think he's got plans for me. There's an application for the fire department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six months. NT school starts in January. But I can't start for six months, yeah, so we'll see. I, my goal is, like everybody else, is, is, to get, school. is to go on a diet after Christmas. So. The ENT school starts in January. Okay, <laughs> keep that in mind. Your daughter passed, you can pass. Okay, it's true. Doesn't say much about your daughter. Right, what's that? Right. <laughs> Right. Ryan's going to be your boss. No, she won't. I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> just don't fail the test. <laughs> you All right. it down. Uh, I just wanted to go over a few things. Um, a big thank you, which was already mentioned, to uh, Mr. Marshall Gorby and your festival, your parade committee, um, for everything they've done. You've been How long have you been doing that Christmas parade? 38 years. 38 years. And, and you know, Marshall doesn't you know live in Kalau, but he's, he may as well. I mean, he has his own. He has his own day. Marshall Gorby Day, thanks to, I think, Mr. Bender and previous council members, so that's great. Uh, you, do, you do a great job, and I mean, just like some of the others have mentioned, it helps bring a lot of positive spirit to the city, so thank you. Uh, Mr. Kigley and, and uh, Roy, ne or Austin next to him at Abe's Hidden Treasures, uh, the parade was just, that was a really neat parade this year that I got to, to help with. Uh, you guys do a lot for the community as well, Heritage of Flight, parade, and, and uh, market, and just, you know, you guys do a lot, so thank you. You know, we have, like uh, Lowell said, we have a lot of people that, that, you know, that don't have to do any of this stuff, you know, because they're not getting paid to do it, but they put a lot of good effort forth, and that's what makes New Carlisle so great, like Mr. Sage said. So, uh, thank you both for that. Uh, Chief Trustee, I want to thank you for uh, getting on my daughter so hard, because after she got out of school, you know, just like any, I think, teenage girl back, back you know, when I graduated, what did they want to be? They always wanted to be an, a vet. Like, why does every girl want to be a vet? I never understood. And I think that was one of her career choices originally, but Chief talked her into to going to uh, the fire department and checking it out. And I think she was a little hesitant for a while, but uh, she, she went and uh, she's, you know, she's enjoying it. So thank you for all you do and looking after one of my most favorite things. <laughs> 
So, um, all the deputies, you guys, again, thanks for all you guys do during the parade and everything you guys look out for all the events we put on and <coughs> keeping the citizens safe, though. So thank you. Okay, so now the hard part of what I wanted to say is try to keep myself calm here. Uh, 12 years on council, it's, it's, it's been interesting. We've, we've all worked pretty well for the most part, though. We don't always agree. Uh, we, we, we have our little battles amongst ourselves, but, you know, I think, uh, I don't know if it was Mr. Bond or Mr. Cook that said it at the last meeting, that for the most part, I do think this council has done a lot together, even though it's not always perfect. We've done a lot, as, and, and we've done very well as a council. So thank you guys for everything you've done. Uh, the administrators, thank you guys for everything. Randy, it's been great working with you. It's been great bumping heads with you. Uh, Many you know, times. I mean, we have some classic, you know. We do. Some classic, uh, you know, arguments sometimes. And, and Howie and Colleen, you guys do great. Um, uh, you guys, you know, like I said, it's got to see the offices today. And you guys, you know, it was great to see you guys get out of a cracker, cracker jack box size office. So you guys deserve it. So thank you to, to you guys and all the city employees as well. Uh, definitely want to thank my parents because... <laughs> Hold me out on this one. Uh, you know, everybody, we're all, we're all who we are because how are we? And I'm who I am because of my parents and my, and my wife who supports me so much. And I thank you guys for everything you've given me. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. Um, it's, it's weird, but, uh, you know, my age, I'm 45. Most people I'm friends with, you know, they're all friends with their high school friends. And, and I'm friends with a lot of those people too, they're my age. But most of my friends are way older than me, like, you know, way older, like Marsha or Mr. Boat. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just lost a couple of friends. <laughs> but a lot of my friends, you know, so by Marshall. <laughs> but I, you know, a lot of my, you know, the, it, it is weird though. A lot of my friends that are that are older than me, I'm, I'm fortunate to have because I got to be with people who I've learned so much from, just like my parents. You know, Marshall, Mr. Bobo, Sage, Roy. Um, you know, Lowell, you guys taught me a lot about what it means to give back to a community and do things. You know, Bob Bender, one of my favorite people from the city. You know, I complained about the first Heritage Flight meeting, which was originally down here. And I was, I hated it because it was just, you know, the hills and I just had a, you know, we just had a child. It was a pain pushing, you know, strollers up down the hills and Bender was like, well, you can't complain unless you join the festival. I was like, all right, so I joined the festival. Well, what are we, almost 20 years later and I haven't left. So, uh, you know, thank you to all of you who have, you know, been my friends and given me advice over the years. It, it's truly valued and you can't put a price tag on, on your guys' friendship. So thank you. I've heard you mention Mr. Bobo and Jim Bobo. He really needs to be acknowledged for everything. He's oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Jim is a great person. And then one more thing I want to mention. Obviously, I thank my family, my kids, my wife, and mom and dad. You know, we've talked about it over the years on council, and I try not to get into it too much because I don't want it to come across as favoritism or unprofessional comments or anything like that. And it's old news, nothing new. Uh, the pool. I've never got to really publicly thank my wife for the hard work she does. I mean, we all thank her, and you guys have done a great job acknowledging that, but I never sit up here and gloat about you because I don't want to look impartial or, or favoritism or anything like that, but you kicked ass at the pool. You took it from losing $70,000 and brought it down into the range of sometimes making a buck or two to only losing, you know, 20 or, you know, depending on the year, but a vast jump from $75,000. So big thank you to everything you do. And uh, <laughs> that's all I got to say. Um, I'll, I look forward to uh, giving you guys like, you know, a bunch of crap or something from the other side of the meeting or the other side of the table. Uh, Howie said I have to wait one year to make a complaint about water or roads. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you all. And uh, I wish you guys all nothing but the best and keep the city going in the right direction. Thank you. Anyone else before we wrap it up? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, for everything. Sir. I don't normally do what I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> but on behalf of council, we'd like to thank you for your 12 years of service to this city. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Good luck to you in the future. Yes, sir. You don't know where to find me in the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm moving out of the city now because my house will burn down if you don't. Basically, I've got to agree with Bill. 
We've had a tumultuous year. Mike has been the leader of the band, so to speak. The only thing I've got to say about it, I'm glad that he mentioned our friend over there as the old man and he let me off the hook. <laughs> I don't remember when he was young. <laughs> no. Right, thank you, Mr. Cope. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Sir. If there's nothing else, I move to adjourn. I know there's a motion on the floor, but I think there's one more thing that needs to be oh, done. I withdraw my motion. Thank you. <laughs> we can all stand for Mr. Lowry. Great guy. <laughs> Thank you. All uh, right, Mr. Lindsay. I move to adjourn, sir. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwall to adjourn. All in favor, sir. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. <coughs> yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Adjourn. Have a good, wonderful. Marriage.